In the past, we've been accustomed to film actors the world over speaking their lines in English, except on the very rare occasions when foreign films have succeeded over here with subtitles. But for a complicated and spectacular production like this one, being adapted in London by worldwide sound, subtitles just wouldn't work. If it's to be a success at all, there's no choice but to dub on English voices. David Weir is the man who's got the job of putting English words into Japanese mouths in this the film of a classic Chinese legend. It's a Nippon television made epic called The Water Margin, split into ten episodes each 50 minutes long. That's a lot of television to convert and rewrite from Japanese to English, but David Weir, a well-known writer in the business, seems to take it all in his stride, even though he's neither done this kind of job before nor understands a word of Japanese. So how does he do it? I start watching the thing many times over um, to get a, an idea of the feel of each episode. Um, I then write two versions of the script, an ideal version where they're saying what I would most like them to say, um, and then a version where they're saying what fits with lip movements as much as possible. But it all seems very approximate. For instance, you say you'll make them say what you want them to say. Surely they've got to say what they are saying, or it doesn't make sense. No, they can be saying anything at all, of course. I work with what, what the lips are doing, finally. Um, and you can see, I mean, there'll, there'll be a sentence is so long, and the, lip, the lips go so many times, so many times, so many times, you know? Well, you can fit all sorts of things to that. At the end of it, I mean, could the, the unsuspecting viewer realise that it has been dubbed and there's a different language behind those English voices? Of course, I mean, the thing is shot with Japanese actors and Japanese locations about a Chinese story, um, but I mean, one hopes that technically it, it'll be good enough that you shouldn't be aware of it at all. But once David has completed his English version of the Japanese original, it's not finished yet. Now comes the tricky task of sorting out the labials. In other words, when the mouths of the Japanese film actors open, the English words pop out at the right time and with the right emphasis. It's at this point where David teams up with the sync editor an expert at making words fit mouths that are in fact saying something completely different. The sword calls you. The final version of the text, now matched precisely to the Japanese mouths, has to be written down for the actors to read. And this is the really clever bit. The sync editor writes the words on a moving band of film here on this specially adapted machine. As the pictures move, so do the words. When the English actors actually begin recording the words, this film containing the dialogue will be projected onto a screen at the same time as the pictures so that they have an accurate guide, not only of what to say, but exactly when to say it. Hang on, I'm going to be brilliant. I'm going to be brilliant. Uh, what? You see where the sword goes across his mouth there? Yeah. Just there. We can put a piece of that there. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Nobody will know. Try it, see if it works. I'll read it for you. Watch it. The century is old and forged with blood. <laughs> it's marvellous. Do it again. Once David Weir and the sync editor are satisfied that a piece of dialogue will work, it's here in the recording theatre where the whole thing begins to come together. And this is how it's done. Now in the studio there, there are two screens. One for the film, the film projector, and one for the dialogue, the dialogue projector, the reading machine. At the same time, special sound equipment records the voices of the actors as the dialogue rolls through on the screen in time with the film. Eventually, the whole thing will match. I say eventually because at any one time they rarely try to dub more than 20 seconds of film. This is run through the projector on a loop repeatedly, anything up to 30 or 40 times before the producer could be satisfied that the match is virtually perfect. I wasn't wrong. <laughs> this sword is not for such as you, my friend. And it has been entrusted to me. Very good. Wasn't good? Yes. Like that. Keep that in. To him who will you, sir. Give a moment to your fate. What do you want, fellow? I want nothing. The sword calls you. I have seven good swords of my own. Yeah. Um, the sword is rightfully yours. It's a bit short. Can you kind of pull it out a bit? Yours. And can you make it yourself a bit... rightfully, rightfully yours. Um, Michael Bakewell is the dubbing director whose job it is to coordinate and supervise the whole thing. From the original choice of actors with the right kind of voices, 
to making sure they get their voices right on the day, the responsibility in the end is all his. We thought at first the thing was undubbable because of the vast Japanese performances. We didn't think we'd get any kind of English equivalent to those at all. So we tried at first doing a kind of storytelling job across it with English voiceover, uh, just telling you roughly what was happening, what was being said, and the occasional English voice going across the Japanese. And this didn't work at all. We therefore decided that the, the only way to get at it was to do it in what I can only describe as kind of English Oriental tradition. The, the kind of, it's, it's somewhere in between Fu Manchu and the Goon Show is the, is, is the accent. Unlike this exquisite weapon forged in blood and centuries old, the sword chooses you. Have you no eyes? The sword belongs to you. I have seven good swords of my own. Uh, none like this exquisite weapon forged in blood and centuries old. The sword chooses you. Thank you.